Okay, welcome to the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so our panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for more. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash Missouri. And with that, I'll turn it over to our first presenter, University of East Anglia. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Alana Stewart. I'm the regional manager for the University of East Anglia, and I am based in the Midwest with all of you in the great state of Michigan. The University of East Anglia is also known as UEA, and we are a relatively young institution founded in 1963. However, since then, we've done a great job at establishing ourselves, becoming a university within the world top and within the UK top 25, which helps to establish us in case you have not heard of us before. We are a public university. We are also campus-based, and I'll show you our lovely campus in a couple slides. We are also a research university, so the professors that you learn under are doing top research in their fields and contributing um, to that respective field as well. We do offer a wide variety of subject areas under four faculties and 23 schools, which amounts to about over 160 undergraduate degree programs for you to choose from. The size of our campus is on the larger side with about 17,000 students, of which about 17% are international from around the world. We are located in Norwich, England, which is about an hour and a half northeast of London by train, where you see that pink glint on the map. That area of England is beautiful countryside, so you have peaceful rolling, rolling hills, um, nice farmland, nice relaxing space for you to be in, and it's about 30 minutes from the coast. However, the university itself is one of the, in one of the largest cities for that area, which is Norwich. It has a population of about 130,000 people. It's a shopping destination and named one of the best cities to live in. Um, we also have one of the highest number of vegan restaurants per person. And I say that just to show the eclectic nature of the city itself. We're also very affordable to live in um, as a city. So it's not expensive. You can see on the left-hand side, kind of some of our cityscapes. We do have a castle, two cathedrals. Um, if you did see the movie Jingle Jangle, which was on Netflix, partially that is filmed in Norwich. So you've actually seen Norwich without knowing it pretty easy to get to Norwich. We do have our own international airport, but you can also travel up from um, London by bus or by train as well. We consistently talk about Norwich as one of the reasons um, that students should choose UEA just because it is such a charming quintessentially British city um, where you will meet a lot of friendly individuals. Our campus is three miles from the proper city center on 320 acres of parkland. The campus features one of the largest sports parks in Great Britain. So on the right hand side, you can see the field pitches and courts. We also have an Olympic sized swimming pool and a rock climbing wall. We have accommodation which is guaranteed for first year students and most of the in rooms that we have are going to be single space so you will not have to share. Those are um, featured throughout campus. We do have a student union which has clubs as well as a live music venue in a good year. So non-COVID, we get 60 or more live music gigs per year. So you get exposed to a ton of different music. The library is open 24 seven. And then we also have the Sainsbury Center for Visual Arts which is featured in the Avengers films as the Avengers headquarters. So whether or not you realize it, you have actually seen UEA's campus. We have a brand new science building uh, that was featured on the first slide that was dedicated by Dr. Jane Goodall. And we also have Productivity East, which is a center for both community engineers as well as our students who are studying engineering. These are the programs that we have to offer. University of East Anglia is well known for creative writing and environmental science, but we also do well with business, economics, and international development. I also mentioned that renewed emphasis on engineering. Our programs are standard three years long. Um, however, a lot of them will have either a year abroad or a in year in industry that will extend them to four years. However, for that additional year, you typically don't pay full tuition and fees. So it's still a good deal for you to be going to. Um, it's worth noting that in the UK, you do have to know what you want to study or have a very good idea because you go directly into your program and they are again, a bit shorter at three years. 
You will apply to UK schools via the UCAS application. You can choose five programs or five universities, whichever it is you're looking for. Um, our requirements at UEA are 3.3 GPA or higher, three AP or IB exams, or an SAT or an ACT. We do require AP exams if you have a subject specific requirement for the degree area you're going into. We'll also look at demonstrated academic interest so that you have a background in what you're going into um, and you kind of know why you want to do that. And then some of our courses, although very few of them will, re will require an interview, audition, or portfolio for admission. Our costs start at about 24,000 US dollars, again, keeping in mind that it is standard three years. And our cost of living, which is set by the government, is at about 13,000 US dollars. In Norwich and at UEA, you could probably live more affordably than this, but it's just a ballpark figure. So total, you're looking at about um, 37,000 US dollars um, per year, depending on the course that you're going into. We do offer some scholarships, which include an automatic scholarship of 4,000 pounds for just the first year. If you apply by writing two short essays, you can get up to 8,000 pounds per year. Um, so it's a really good deal to just write those essays and get them done. We do offer a limited number of scholarships by course. Those are more for postgraduate students. And then music and sport does offer some scholarship as well. Most of the UK schools are eligible to take FAFSA loans if you and your family are eligible to receive them. And then also students are allowed to work part-time either on or off campus during studies and full-time during any study break. We do invite you to connect with us, um, especially on our official channels, but also check to see what students are saying unofficially about us. We do have a student ambassador named Nicole. She is going to most likely, I think 95% sure, she's going to continue on with a master's degree with us, um, but she's in her last year of an undergrad degree at UEA. She'd be happy to connect with you about what it's like, um, the student life is like at UEA and what it's like to study in Norwich. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I will send my details um, in the chat shortly and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is University or Oxford Books University. Hi everyone, I'm sharing my screen now. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Siobhan Frank. I'm the Global Recruitment Manager here at Oxford Brooks University located in Oxford. Uh, so I help students in from the US, uh, Canada and Mexico uh, who want to come study in the UK to come over and study at Brooks. Uh, so there are my contact details as well. So Oxford Brooks University is a mid-sized university. We're about 18,000 students. Uh, very similar to a lot of other UK universities, we do have a very high uh, international student population as well. Uh, so 17% of our uh, student body is made up of international students. Uh, and that's from over 140 different countries. So again, if you come to study in the UK, there's a good chance that you're going to meet a lot of different international students from a lot of different locations across the world. Now we are located in the beautiful city of Oxford. Uh, this may sound familiar to you uh, because it is a very famous city. Uh, we do share the city with another university, so there are two here located in Oxford. We've got Oxford Brooks University and the University of Oxford. Uh, what this means is that we do, by having two universities in the city, we do have a very high student population in the city. One in every four adults here are students, uh, so it is very much a student-friendly and student-centric city. Uh, now here, I just thought I'd share with you a few pictures of, uh, of what Oxford looks like and Oxford Brooks looks like. Uh, so up here on our top left, you can see Broad Street. That's our, one of our main streets downtown. That gives you a sense of some of the buildings that we've got uh, here downtown in Oxford. Quite a beautiful city to look at. In the middle there, you can see our high street. So high street, kind of like your main street. You'll typically get a lot of your shops, main shops, restaurants, et cetera there. Now here on our bottom left, uh, you can see where our School of Law is. So we've got that combination between the historic. And then over here on our right, you can see the John Henry Brooks building, which is uh, one of our more modern buildings. It was uh, completed, I think, in 2014. Uh, and it is a very strong architectural building. We do have a very strong architecture program here at the university. So uh, the ethos of that does run through in the building. Now, why study at Oxford Brooks? It's more than just your uh, education, although we do hold a number of different accolades. Uh, so we are among the world's top universities in uh, 13 different subject areas, including business and management, politics and international studies, 
English language and literature, engineering real, and real estate uh, and social studies. So uh, there are quite a few different options to choose from. We've got four different faculties, again, with a number of different schools and departments within that. Uh, so over here on our right hand side, you can see where we're located. We are in the city of Oxford. Oxford itself is about an hour away from London. Uh, you can get there either by bus or by train. We have a 24 hour bus system that actually picks students up outside of the Headington campus and takes you directly downtown. So it's nice and easy to get back and forth. Uh, we do also have a bus line called the airline, uh, which takes uh, people from Oxford uh, into Heathrow Airport and Gatwick Airport. So uh, again, it's not difficult to live here without a car uh, because there are plenty of ways for you to get back and forth. Uh, the UK is nice and easy to kind of navigate around. So about Oxford Books, again, we've got those four different faculties. So we have the Business School, Health and Life Sciences, Humanities and Social Sciences, and then the Faculty of Technology, Design and Environment. Uh, we are one of the UK's younger universities. Uh, initially founded in 1865, we were a school of art, but then formally became recognized as a university in 1992. So we are quite young, but we do rank very highly among young universities. So we are among the top 50 under 50. Uh, so we do hold quite good positions here. But again, you can see some of the different uh, subject areas that are available for you to study. Now, again, I thought I would highlight some of the courses. So, uh, and this does uh, highlight too some of the facilities that you'll be working with. Uh, I know a number of people that we've spoken to speak very highly of the different facilities that we've got available. So here on our left-hand side, you can see some of the facilities that our motorsport engineering students use. Uh, here on our right-hand side, you can also see uh, some of our sport and exercise science. And then again, you can see our Oxford Brooks uh, boathouse. Uh, so we do hold a, uh, um, an elite level rowing team uh, and it does include a, uh, an Olympic level pathway uh, into the system as well. So again, by coming to study with us, you get a chance to live in the city of Oxford. Uh, you also get a chance to uh, meet other international students and get the support that you need while you're studying here at the university. Uh, we do have what's called the International Student Advice Team. Again, you're probably going to see this at some of the other UK universities, but it is a, a team designed specifically for international students to make sure that you have all the support necessary on your journey kind of as an international student coming to the UK to study. So some of the things that I thought I would go through today, uh, we've got uh, our entry requirements, fees, and funding. So our entry requirements typically require a 3.0 GPA plus one of the SAT, three APs, or the ACT. However, I thought I would announce to you, uh, we've just recently gone test optional. So uh, you can apply with your uh, high school diploma from a 3.0 GPA. Uh, some courses might require subject specific requirements. Uh, those can be met either through your honors courses or through APs as well, depending on what you've got available. Uh, now, our fees typically range from around that £14,000 to that £17,000 in tuition. Uh, and then again, most of our courses, they are the three-year format here in, uh, in England. Um, but uh, you do have the option of adding an additional placement year in many of our courses. Uh, that placement year typically sits around that 1500 to 2000 pounds for the work placement. Uh, that is typically because you're going to be supervised during that year. So uh, you will still have school supervision and, and the connection there. So there's a small fee associated with it. Now on the funding side, we do accept FAFSA, Veterans Loans Benefits and Sally Mae Loans as well. And this year we do offer a 2000 pound international acceptance scholarship. So again, uh, Alana went through this really nicely. So uh, you can either apply to us directly via our direct application portal or through UCAS or through your local agent. Uh, now, if you've got any other questions, thanks so much. You can feel free to reach out to me at sfrank at books.ac.uk. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is University College Dublin. Great. Thank you. So much. Um, I'll just get my screen ready here. All right. Um, so my name is Brady Troy, and I'm here to talk about University College Dublin, or also called UCD for short. UCD is Ireland's largest and most international university. So we are home to over 18,000 undergraduate students, 25% of whom hail from outside of Ireland, just like all of you. Uh, UCD is ranked number one in Ireland by the U.S. News and World Report. And we are in the top 1% of higher education institutions worldwide. So you can be sure that when you get your degree at UCD, you are getting a degree that is internationally ranked and internationally accredited that you will be able to carry with you throughout the world. 
So uh, first off, I'd really like to talk about the Emerald Isle, what it's like to live, study, and travel in Ireland. So just from my own experience, Ireland is really the best country in which to attend college. It is the only English speaking member of the European Union, and this offers a really great gateway to the rest of Europe for American students. Ireland is routinely voted one of the safest, one of the happiest, and one of the friendliest countries in the world. The scenery is just absolutely breathtaking. If you've ever seen photos of Ireland, you know. And the entire country is about the size of Illinois. So it makes it incredibly easy to travel around the country and across to Europe. Uh, UCD itself is located in the heart of Ireland's capital city. Dublin has one of the youngest populations in Europe. And this also helps make it an amazing city in which to attend college with something always going on. Dublin is also considered the Silicon Valley of Europe, and we host many of the European headquarters for some of America's largest industries. So at UCD's main campus, as you can see both on the screen and behind me, um, offers state-of-the-art learning and living facilities right near this bustling city center and Ireland's major business hubs that I was just talking about. So UCD is an incredibly modern city, but built on tradition. So what I mean by this is that our buildings, our research institutions, and our resources are constantly updated to offer you the best possible learning environment. At the same time, however, UCD has a really unique and impactful history, wherein the college played a huge role in the establishment of Ireland as an independent nation, and we have educated over half of Ireland's prime ministers. So you're getting a great education that the leaders of Ireland themselves swear by. <laughs> Um, we are Ireland's most international student body, and what comes with this is that we have a really great international student support system. We offer a global lounge, guaranteed on-campus accommodation for international students, and we host over 160 clubs and societies. So with this, we have a really huge student body and an extensive alumni network. So this kind of all combines to create an incredibly tight-knit community to help you feel at home, even when you're across the ocean. So just a little bit more about our campus. Um, we are very similar to a traditional US college campus with all of the amenities that we offer. UCD is actually Europe's largest urban campus. So you kind of get the best of both worlds where you get that great campus rah-rah experience, but at the same time, you're in a multinational European city with an international airport just half an hour away. Um, UCD does offer academic supports, including libraries throughout campus that are dedicated to different academic disciplines. We have student advisors, we have math and writing centers. Additionally, we offer many personal supports in the way of peer mentorship, student health and counseling services, and a wellness text line. Um, I talked a little bit about our accommodation, but I really love getting to this slide because uh, it's a lot different than what we expect from some American schools. So UCD does offer guaranteed on-campus housing for incoming international students. We have rooms for over 3,000 students on campus, and each of these are in an apartment style setup with your own private bedroom and a shared kitchen and bathroom with maybe four or five other students. So there's no dorm rooms. You're not sharing a bunk bed with a bunch of people. You have your own bedroom, no matter which dorm, which uh, residence hall you live in. And you're not sharing a big community kitchen, you're sharing it only with your flatmates. Um, additionally, many of these uh, residence halls have gyms in the building, they all have laundry, you can find food stores. So again, this is one of the benefits of being on an actual campus, even in the middle of this big city, is that you do have all these student resources for all of those little things that you might need when you're living on campus. So we do offer over 70 undergraduate courses, and this includes a liberal arts and sciences pathway and professional programs in law, medicine, and veterinary medicine. So at UCD, there are two pathways to a degree. You can study direct entry or liberal arts and sciences. Many of our programs are direct entry, and these offer three-year bachelor's degrees or a four-year combined master's degree. Um, and this is a really great opportunity because you can start studying your degree right away without having to take any general education requirements. So you're saving a lot of time and money doing that by going jumping straight into your chosen passion. However, if you're a little bit more undecided um, and would like some more time to choose your major, we do offer a standard liberal arts and sciences degree that mirrors this 
basic American four-year timeline. So this would be where you go in, you take a few classes in your first two years across different disciplines, and then you choose your major by the end of your second year, and then graduate within that four years. Um, once you graduate, we do have an extensive alumni network. We have a really hands-on career center that helps you find internships while you're in school. Um, most of these paid so that once you graduate, you're all set and ready to get a job in the field that you love. And this all combines to make Ireland UCD the number one college for employability in Ireland. So I'm almost done, but um, applying to UCD is fairly simple. We have very transparent entry requirements on our website. You can just log on to see them now. You can apply directly at ucd.ie or through the common application. Um, applications are now open and rolling into the summer. Uh, one last thing to note is I often hear people worrying about the price tag of studying abroad, and honestly, it is very price comparable to a U.S. university, with over 80% of our international students receiving a scholarship from UCD. So we accept the FAFSA, we accept federal loans, private loans, and the GI Bill. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you'd like to learn more, please reach out to me. I'll put my contact in the chat or visit our website. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Roto Education College Semester Abroad. Great, thank you so much. Um, so Verto is a little bit different um, than the other colleges and universities here. So what Verto offers is we are a first semester of college abroad. Um, so after, after you join Verto for that first semester or first full year, um, traveling around to different countries, you can take those credits that you've earned with Verto to your college or university of choice, whether that be here in the States or um, at another university abroad. So I have a video. I hope my computer is not too choppy. So I will play this real quick. Great, so that is Virto in a nutshell. Um, we really believe in the, the power of experiential education um, and we want to make higher education and international travel more, more accessible for students all across the board, um, no matter where they're coming from and no matter what their um, college plans are or just post high school plans in general. So if you look at Virto, um, you can really shake that down into three main pillars. The first is the best first year of college. Second is admissions to a great fit school. So we actually partner with 60 universities. Um, we'll talk about that in just a sec. And then the third is affordability because obviously tuition is a huge part of college. So the best first year of college can mean an, uh, a number of different things for, for every student. Um, when you're looking at Virto, there are some three main staples. So the first is connecting to the world. So we don't want our students to be just um, tourists traveling around to these, these countries and not understanding anything below surface level. So we really want to make that connection um, no matter where they are and no matter what community they're in. We want them to understand what the culture is, what the communities are like, what are global issues going on in these areas. So we have six different semester options that our students get to choose from. Um, we have three that are we call it on campus, that's England, Italy, and Spain, and three that we call in the field. So it's like Costa Rica, Hawaii, and the South Pacific. Um, the second point is sharpening your mind. So we are college semesters, um, we do, have college courses that you're taking. So um, we're not a gap year, but you're gonna be taking 12 to 16 credits. Um, the It's up to you to pick the classes that you are interested in taking, but it's gonna be all those freshman general education credits. So really accessible for students regardless of most majors. Um, we do have discussion-based classes. Um, we're very experiential um, and that's gonna look different field and campus, of course. Um, it is small classes, so 20 to 25 students per class. You're with a Verto cohort. Um, so you're all taking classes together. You're with our staff, um, our program leaders and professors. So discovering yourself. Um, there's a lot that we weave into our semesters. It's not just academics and travel. We're really helping students to understand what their passions are, um, understand 
Um, we have a purpose finding seminar as well as life skills class that we're weaving in throughout our semester. So this is looking at everything from where, you know, where do you hope to be in five or 10 years? What are steps you can build to get there? Um, to what are healthy relationships and how to set boundaries to how to study for tests and what do credit card debt and college loans look like. So it's really just amping you up to hit the ground running when you finish with your semester with Berto. Our on-campus semesters, this is in London. Um, the course selection is actually much more vast. I just need to update my slideshow. Um, so you get to pick your classes, of course. And the on-campus semesters are gonna look pretty similar to this. So it's um, pretty traditional for like a study abroad image um, in a lot of ways. So you're staying with other Virto students in a flat in London, student residence, you're commuting to class. We do have different excursions that we're doing as groups um, and really trying to build that that learning from the classroom outside of the classroom as well. Our field semester is very different, non-traditional um, in a lot of ways. So these are in um, South Pacific, Costa Rica and Hawaii. So for these, you're actually staying in um, base houses with our program leaders, with our staff, and you're in a group of 20 students max. So you guys are traveling around every month to a different location. We're not in big, um, you know, vibrant cities like, like London, um, but instead we're staying in smaller rural communities around these countries. Um, there's a lot of excursions that we pack into our field semesters. Um, we also have a year long change the world honors program. This is for really academically motivated students. Um, which is pretty exciting. So admissions to a great fit school, this is where um, our partner schools come into play. So when you apply to Virto, it's a free application. We are non-binding, we're test optional, 2.5 minimum GPA. When you apply to us, you can also apply to up to five of our partner colleges. So what this means is you're getting a holistic review. Um, it's a free application and a quicker admissions turnaround to these awesome schools. We have 60 universities that we partner with. Um, most of them are in the States, four of them are international. One of them is actually um, University College Dublin, who's here today. Uh, so we have a really awesome array of partner universities just offering something for every student. We do have a transfer guarantee, which is a post virto semester guarantee transfer to 27 of our schools as well. Last but not least, affordability, very important. We aim to be as affordable, if not much more affordable than a traditional four-year university um, with like US costs. So 15 to 25,000, that does include three meals a day, all your lodging um, and all of our excursions. We do accept FAFSA, we have institutional aid and we accept any external scholarships as well. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website. You can scan our code or check out our Instagram. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Our next presenter is University of East London. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Caitlin Banania and I am the America's Recruitment Officer here at the University of East London. And today I'm going to discuss studying at UEL and um, how studying in the UK compares to studying in the US. So before I discuss um, studying in London, I just wanna talk about the city of London first. Um, so this quote says, when a man is tired of London, he is tired of life. And I really think that this quote captures the beauty and the essence of London. It's one of the most diverse cities in the world. It's filled with opportunities and excitement. And I think my favorite thing about living in London is that you never know what's waiting for you around the corner. And um, I've lived here for three and a half years now, and I still haven't done everything that there is to do here. And um, I don't think there are that many places in the world that can offer you that. And um, I was living in Los Angeles before I moved to London. So I think I'm definitely in a position to say that. Um, so this is a photo of our Docklands campus. Um, we've got three campuses all based in East London. Um, however, I would say the Docklands campus is our main campus. Um, we're one of the only London universities that has on-campus accommodation. So as you can see, um, we're right on the river. So our students get to wake up to that gorgeous view. Um, we're set in, I would say we're set in a pretty residential part of London. 
Um, the moment you step out of campus, there's an elementary school, there's neighborhoods, there's a park, lots of trees and green spaces, um, but we also benefit from having an on-campus tube station, which connects us to the, the rest of London. So um, you get the best of both worlds. You're living on campus, you're living in a residential part of London, you're all so in the same lesson, having um, transportation on campus. So just to give you um, some quick facts about UEL, um, the, the, the uni our university's roots can be traced back to 1890. We've got 17,000 students, 20% of which are international students. We've got a wide variety of subjects. Um, you can find all of our courses on our website, um, but they're all spread across six different schools. So we've got um, the School of Education, School of Business and Law, School of Health, Sport and Biosciences, Art and Creative Industries, Architecture and Computing, as well as our School of Psychology. Um, and just to compare UEL versus studying in the US, um, our application is free. You can find us on the Common App. We do rolling admission, which means we aim to send you your decision within two to four weeks of you submitting your application. And the deadline to submit your application is the end of July. Um, studying in the UK, probably the biggest difference um, between studying in the UK versus studying in the US is the fact that um, your degrees are only three years long. Um, that is not because we take a four year degree and squish it into three years. It's because we don't require general education. So from day one of your studies, you are studying your dedicated subject. So it's good news for anyone who maybe isn't a fan of math or a fan of English. Um, let's say, for instance, if you wanted to study psychology, you will only be studying psychology classes. So um, it's great if you know what you want to study right off the bat. Tuition for the first year is just 19,000 US dollars, um, and that includes free textbooks. So all of your textbooks will be made available to you in the library or electronically, so you won't be expected to upfront any of the costs per textbook. So um, not only are you saving time, but you are also saving quite a bit of money as well. And tuition for your entire degree is less than 60,000 US dollars. Um, just to talk about accommodation, um, so all of our rooms on campus are private and ensuite, meaning you get your own room and your own bathroom. Uh, you'll just have to share the kitchen and you'll typically be sharing between three and five other students. Um, accommodation starts at 8,000 US dollars per year and meal plans are not compulsory. Um, you'll have a fully equipped kitchen and we're also in walking distance to the local grocery store. So you're more than welcome to buy your own groceries um, and cook your own meals, but we also do have on-campus dining options available. And if you have any questions at all, um, do feel free to get in touch. Um, I know it can be overwhelming, you know, applying to colleges, let alone colleges overseas. And um, as you can tell by my accent, I am not British, I am American, and I did study in London. So I'm more than happy to kind of guide you through the process or share my experience. So do feel free to get in touch if you have any questions at all. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is University of Glasgow. Okay, one second here. Let's give it a second to switch over. I'm hoping this did. Uh, so everyone, hi, my name is Jay Shamlin. I'm with the University of Glasgow. And as you can hear, I'm not Scottish. I too am American. I'm based in Chicago, Illinois. And I recruit Americans to go to school overseas for a post-grad, undergrad, study abroad, you name it, to the University of Glasgow. Quick note, if you want to scan the QR code in the bottom right-hand corner on any of the slides that you see, that is your way of opting in to receive more information about the University of Glasgow, because, you know, we are not like the U.S. where you buy, buy names from SAT or ACT. You have to opt in for GDR, GDPR compliance. So without further ado... University of Glasgow was founded in 1451. We are an ancient Scottish university, and we are the fourth oldest English-speaking university in the entire world behind Oxford, Cambridge, and St. Andrews. We have 
30,000 students from over 140 different countries, which means we're about half Scottish students and half international students on our campus, but we're only 2% U.S. That's always, I always ask students when they let's go abroad, do you want to go to a school that has, you know, a 25% U.S.-based population, or do you want to go to one where, you know, you might be the only one in the classroom, something to think about. We're ranked 14th in the, in the U.K., we're 67th in the Q.S. World Rankings, but again, I'm just going on and on in accolades about the University of Glasgow, and I will segue with that on to talking about Scotland. Scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the world in 2019. And this is Loch Lomond, which is about a 35 minute drive from campus. And I love this because, you know, many people think of Scotland as the rolling hills, the picturesque views, the great hill walks, as you can see on this photo. But we are located in Glasgow, Scotland. Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland at about a million people. And Scotland as a, co as a country is only 5 million people. So you are in a country where there are more sheep than there are people, that's a fun fact, but you are going to be in the largest city. Many people think Edinburgh is because it is the capital, but that is not. Glasgow is the largest city. We are the fourth largest in the UK, second best for shopping. We're a UNESCO city of music, which means pre-COVID, we had over 150 music events each week. It could be something as simple as a string quartet at a pub, or it could be something as big as at one of these two stadiums. Um, the Hydra, which is the green one, is the second largest or second busiest stadium in the entire world. But we're located in Glasgow's West End. So think of the West End as um, similar to, you know, a suburb of, of like a neighborhood of a city. If you're, if you're from Chicago, it'd be like Wicker Park or Logan Square. If you're from New York, it'd be like Brooklyn to Manhattan, right? We're about a 15, 20 minute walk to the city center of Glasgow. We're located in the West End. And my favorite part of the West End is the photo behind you. This is going to be known as Ashton Lane. As you can see, it's a pedestrian only street. And you'll see here that, you know, it was, there's kinds of uh, restaurants, shops, and pubs. And this is literally 200 feet from campus. It's right behind our geology building. And this is a great area to grab a pint with your mate after class and just kind of take in Glasgow and just kind of be just, you know, living in Scotland. Now, this is an aerial shot of campus. And I'm sure the first thing that pops out to you is, of course, the main building, which was founded in the 1800s by Sir George. And this will house our Adam Smith School for Business, a lot of College of Arts courses, like international relations, psychology, um, tons of lecture halls are in here. We have a coffee shop in here. You will definitely end up in class here at some point. And another fun fact that is the clock tower used in the movie Harry Potter. I'm sure you know Harry Potter is filmed all over the UK, but that is the clock tower you see in the movie. Um, you'll see here we have a 13-story library, which gives you a great view of campus and of Glasgow as a whole. And on that 13th floor is going to be something known as Special Collections which right now we're housing Shakespeare's manuscripts, which I never thought I would ever be in the presence of a Shakespeare manuscript, but I've held one with gloves on, of course. And then, but finally, you all will be at the Fraser Building. The Fraser Building is like your one-stop shop, your student union. On the fourth floor will be one of the dining hall options. We're very similar to like UEL and pretty much the rest of the UK where you'll be catering for yourself, but we do have dining hall options on campus for students. On the third floor will be our student support. So anything with visas, paying for school, studying abroad, you name it, that's gonna be on the third floor. And then on the second floor is gonna be the doctor's office. So I always tell students, if you have any questions, this is kind of your one-stop shop when you're on campus. But again, beautiful. And again, this is the West End that you're seeing. It's about 10 to 15 minute walk to get to downtown. Subject areas, we have over 500 different programs available for students. The only thing that we do not offer at the University of Glasgow, I'd say, is anything performing arts space. When you go to performing arts, you'll want to go, so like acting, singing, visual arts, uh, you'll go to Gl the Glasgow School of Art, which is a 10 minute walk from campus. But pretty much we have five different pro program combinations that you can kind of set, you can mix and match at the University of Glasgow. Now in Scotland, we are a four year education system. We are not like the rest of the UK that is three years. Another fun fact is that the United States and France have loosely based their education system off of Scotland. So Harvard, Yale, all those big schools with those big reputations can thank Scotland. And you'll see here, what's nice about this, why I think a lot of students end up choosing school in Scotland is that during your first year, we give you three areas of study to test the waters between. Again, you are taking more courses that are related to your program, but it's gonna be different from instead of doing three years to do four years. And as you see here, the student brought down chemistry and physics and then chose to be just a physics major. But if they chose to switch to chemistry, they could because they took the prerequisites for it. Entry requirements, uh, as you probably heard in the UK, we're pretty test heavy. We're looking for a 1280 SAT or a 27 ACT, and then two AP exams of a four above in relevant fields. What's nice is that if you have a combination of this, you are going to be admitted. It's that black and white, but we are going to be test optional next for the next incoming class. 
If you aren't able to take any of the AP exams in the next, within this upcoming year, I hope you are able to. It'll make your life a lot easier for some of the other schools. Um, but we are requiring at least a 3.5 unweighted GPA and then honors AP or dual enrollment to be considered. And then this will be more of a holistic approach of reading your uh, council recommendation letters and your, and your personal statements and all that and all that fun jazz. And then finally, tuition starts at about $25,000 a year. Um, we do offer a undergraduate excellence scholarship, which is going to be about 5,000 pounds a year, which is like $6,200 US a year. Um, you'll be granted that if you score a five on the AP exam. And then finally, we do accept FAFSA, uh, so any federal loans you get to come over. And then there are three U.S.-based officers. I'm your international officer. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. But that is it. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, great. I'm going to ask all of our reps to turn on their cameras. We'll just do a really quick round robin. We have about three minutes here. If everyone could just, uh, in the same order that we presented, just go through and just share um, one piece of advice that you would give someone going through the college search process. Thanks. So my um, advice for people going through the college search process, I did mention in the presentation, but mine is to check out social media, not always officially promoted by the universities, to check out to see what the universities are being tagged in, um, just to get the full picture and what students and other people are saying about that. Hi, and my advice is probably figuring out uh, what is it that you want to get from your university experience and help to you and use that to help tailor your search? I think uh, all universities are going to have something really nice to offer. So just figuring out what it is that you want to look for. So if that's location or if that's, you know, you're looking for research intensive or you're looking for practical, there's going to be different things that uh, will likely be appealing. So use that to help kind of focus in and narrow in what you want. Great. I Definitely echo what my two colleagues have said before. And I just wanna add, uh, look outside your comfort zone. I know it might be easy to just look at the colleges that your friends are applying to, maybe that your parents went to, but you never know what might be your dream college until you actually do the search. So cast a wide net and just check them all out and reach out to us for any questions. Yeah, um, I would say, don't get phone calls in the middle of meetings. So I would say um, try to stay organized with everything. Um, you know, be proactively organized instead of just applying to a ton of schools. Really like take some time, think about which ones are going to be important for you um, so that you can follow up accordingly and just use your, use your college counselors. That's what we're here for. We love answering questions. Um, so definitely get your information from us as much as you can. It's gonna be the, the easiest and quickest way. And my top tip is quite personal to me. So if you are considering studying overseas, um, one of the things that I did when I was a senior in high school is I didn't tell anyone that I was applying to schools overseas. And I didn't tell anyone until I had actually made this, the, the decision, sorry. Um, and I think in by doing that, um, I was able to make the decision for myself and no one was able to sway me. And I was really kind of pleased that I did that because I know that I made the decision for myself. All good answers. I'm, I don't have anything else to add. I mean, just again, good luck in the college search. And as she said, if you have any questions, reach out to any of the counselors that are, that are here. Well, thank you everyone for sharing that uh, with us and thank you uh, to st students for being here with us tonight. When this window closes, there'll be a quick four question survey. We'd love your feedback. This is just one of many sessions being hosted, so please sign up for more. And again, in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording and others at strivescan.com backslash Missouri. Thank you again to all of our presenters and I hope uh, you all have a wonderful evening.